Okay, last time we did division with just a monomial at the bottom, and this time we're going to divide by a binomial. Okay, so I want to show you, this is called polynomial long division. So, if you're familiar with long division, I'm gonna, I got a problem on the side over here that's just a long division problem, old school long division. If you're familiar with that, the procedure for doing this is very similar, all right? So I want you to think about it. How would you start a problem like this? 3,217 divided by 21. The first thing you do is you ask yourself, how many times will 21 go into, and then you try to go into 3, it won't go into 3. 21 into 32, okay, that goes one time. So you ask yourself, what times that uh, goes this? So, and when you, when you come up with it, when you figure it out, you say 1 times 21, and you want to get as close as you can to the 32, right? If you could go twice, you'd go twice, but 1 is the biggest you can get. So I know you know polynomial long division. I know you know long division rather with just numbers like this, but I want you to think through the, the steps that you go through to do this, and the steps are very similar over here. For example, when we start this problem off right here, we say what times z minus 4 gives you not the whole thing, but the first part of it, like just like that over there. And, then, and here's what you ask yourself. What times z will give you z squared? And that's the number that you're going to want to put up here. And the answer is z. z times z would give you z squared. Because when you multiply z times z, you get exactly z squared. And the idea is you need to be able to subtract some stuff away. Okay, back to this one over here. The idea is, now this is the subtraction problem, all right? Whatever you put up here, you multiply by this, and you get that right there, and then you subtract from this part of it. So 32 minus 21 is 11, and then you bring down the next one, right? Okay, back to this over here. Whatever you choose up here, you multiply that by the number sitting out here, the whole thing. So z times z is z squared, and z times negative 4 is negative 4z. Then you subtract, okay? So just like you subtract over there, you subtract over here. But watch this. This is a good place for people to make mistakes. Z squared minus Z squared is zero. That's good. That's what you wanted. You wanted to get rid of the Z squared. 2Z minus negative 4Z. You got, most people are going to do 2Z minus 4Z is negative 2Z. It's not. With this minus sign out here, if you go 2Z minus negative 4Z, so that makes that a positive. That's 2Z plus 4Z, which is 6Z. Okay. So the procedure here is exactly the same as that over there. So what's the next thing to do? Bring down the next part of it. Bring down the negative 24, just like I brought this one down over here. And then I ask myself, all right, how many, how many times will 21 go into that? And five, probably not quite five, maybe five. Five times 20 is 100 plus five. Okay, so five would work. So I'll put a five right there. And then five times 21 is 105. And then I subtract. 111 minus 105 is 6. Bring that down. Bring the next 7 down. Okay? And I continue, right? That's long division. Okay? Same thing over here. Now, at this point, I ask myself, okay, what times z would give me this? So that's how you make a decision about what to put up here. You ask yourself, what times the first part of it gives you the first part of it? And the answer is 6. You want to match it exactly, so you want a positive 6. Because when you get it, 6 times z, now you multiply that, is 6z. Okay, 6 times negative 4 is negative 24. Well, it just so happened that that came out to be pretty like that. It won't always be that way. But here's a minus sign like this, right? It's so 6z minus 6z is 0. And it just so happens negative 24 minus negative 24 is negative 24 plus 24, which is 0. Which means there's no remainder, which means that it, this was a factor of that, right? This divided evenly into that. Here is your answer. So the question was, what do you get? when you divide z squared plus 2z minus 24 divided by z minus 4. And the answer is z plus 6. Also, if you remember from division a long time ago, you could say this, z plus 6 times z minus 4 would give you all this. All right? Let's just finish this one up right quick since it's sitting here. 21 into 67. You can go three more times like that. 3 times 21 is 63. When you subtract, you get 4. All right, so we say there's a remainder of 4, and the way we handle our remainder when there's a remainder is like this. We say 153 and 4 over 21. So if you ask me what is 3217 divided by 21, I would say 153 and 4 21s, okay? If you have a remainder over here, if there would come out a remainder over here, you would have said plus that remainder over this z minus 4. So sometimes you might get like z plus 6 plus, if that would have been like a 3, say, plus 3 over z minus 4. 
if the remainder would have come out to be 3, okay? So that's how you handle the remainder. You handle the remainder the same way for polynomial long division as you would the old long division problem like that, okay? Let's look at another. Uh, this problem is actually exactly the same type of problem, but it looks different, right? It looks like multiplication. It's all this expression times this. But look, it's x minus 2 to the negative 1. What did negative exponents do for you? Negative exponents don't make it negative. Negative exponents make it 1 over that. So this is the same thing as saying, I could have given you this problem exactly like this. All right? You could have seen the problem like this. The problem is, what is 5x cubed minus 13x squared plus 10x minus 8 divided by x minus 2? Because that's what x minus 2 to the negative 1 power means. It means 1 over that, 1 over x minus 2, or like this, all right? Or, here's, here's, uh, here's what we get into. 5x cubed minus 13x squared plus 10x minus 8 divided by x minus 2, like that. Let's switch colors here. So this is polynomial long division. Polynomial long division, all right? So in order to divide x minus 2 into all this, the first thing I ask myself is, what would I have to multiply by x to get 5x cubed? And the answer, of course, is 5x squared. And I put it over, and since it's not x squared, I want to put it over this one right here to keep uh, like expressions on top of each other, OK? And also, that'll keep me when I get to the end over here, I'll know I'm finished. So 5x squared, the reason I chose 5x squared is because 5x squared times x is 5x cubed. And that's what I wanted. I wanted this part to go away. I want to be able to subtract that away. See, so this is a thing, you know, long division can be hard sometimes because you have to make decisions. Just like the long division a long time ago. Some people had trouble. You know, it's like when you were in the second grade or whatever, they were giving you your times tables. And they were just saying 8 times 8, 64. 8 times 7, 56. And you were learning your, your times tables like that. You know, there was no thinking about it. You just had to learn them. And then when you got to division, uh, all of a sudden, they said 3,217 divided by 21. Well, you don't have that memorized. You had to learn the procedure. And the procedure causes you to make decisions. And so that's why long division was a stopping point for a lot of people when they were in the second or third grade, whenever you learn long division. Because it was kind of hard because you had to actually think. You had to make a decision. What do you multiply by 21 to get a little bit less than 32? Uh, just one. Okay, then one times that is that, subtract that. Then there's, so you learn the procedure, but you have to make decisions along the way. And that's the same thing that's going to be true for our polynomial long division. So that's what we're into here. We have to ask ourselves, what times x gives us 5x cubed? The answer is 5x squared. So 5x squared times x is 5x cubed. 5x squared times negative 2 is negative 10x squared. All right? So the main thing is I wanted this part to be exactly alike so that when I subtract it, and I always put a big negative sign out here because you'll mess this one up. You won't mess this up. You'll say, okay, 5x cubed minus 5x cubed, zero. That's good. But this is the one you'll mess up. You'll go negative 13 minus 10 is negative 23. That's wrong. It's negative 13x squared minus negative 10x squared, which is plus 10x squared. So negative 13x squared plus 10x squared. Take the sign of a larger and subtract. It's negative 3x squared. All right? Negative 13 plus 10 negative 3x squared, and then bring down the next part, it's plus 10x, and then I ask myself, what times x would give me negative 3x squared? Got to match it exactly because we want it to subtract away. And the answer is negative 3x, and you notice my x's are above my x's. Negative 3x times x is negative 3x squared. Keep going down like that. All right, where was I? Negative 3x. So negative 3x times x is negative 3x squared. Negative 3x times negative 2 is positive 6x. Right? Negative 3 times negative 2 is positive 6. There you go. All right, when I subtract this, I go negative 3x squared minus negative 3x squared is 0. So this is good. 10x minus 6x is 4x. So again, just remember there's a big subtraction over here because you're subtracting everything. So. Will this come out evenly also, or will I have a remainder? I'm about to find out, okay? Because now I ask myself, what times x will give me 4x? The answer, of course, is 4. So I'll put plus 4 right there. 4 times x is 4x. And 4 times negative 2 is negative 8. So it just so happened that I gave myself another example where it worked out evenly with no remainder. All right? So this is my final answer then. 
5x squared plus 3x plus 4. Again, if this, if this number would have came out to be 7, then I would have said, oh, my remainder is 7. Here's, a, here's a, what my final answer would have been. It would have been 5x squared minus 3x plus 4 plus 7 over x minus 2. So if you get a remainder, you put it over that right there, plus 7 over x minus 2, if this number right here would have come out to be 7. All right? But the remainder came out to be 0, and so that's my final answer. So I want you to try some of these um, long division, polynomial long division problems on page, um, I'm going to have to show you this page again, 237. So 21 through 48, page 237, 21 through 48. bunch of long division problems in there. So if you do all those, then you'll be really good at this. Let's see if you can see that right there. Maybe so, right? No complaints so far. All right. Polynomial long division. Go get them.